I'm Tara. I'm Jill. We're <laughs> from livingonadime.com. Um, today we are talking about cheap and easy meals. Is the stream light on? I'm not showing it live on either one. Mm -hmm. the stream is on. Um, we're trying to get this. Oh, yes, yes. Okay. It's live on Facebook. Type. We're, we're live on Facebook and YouTube. Michael is trying to run Frankly. <laughs> we're only getting yeah, our new program today. Yeah. Okay. So today we're talking yes. about cheap and easy meals. Um, so we have several books for this. We have our menus from Dining on a Dime that goes with our Dining on a Dime cookbook. This is all the recipes and this is all the menus using the recipes from the book. And then we have our other book quick and easy menus on a dime. All three of these are on sale on our website. And um, we are going to give you some tips and recipes from these books today. I'm sorry, we're having a hard time getting started. We've had, we've been working on this for an hour and everything's been going wrong, so. Okay, so yes. And my grandmother's went to the hospital last night, so mom flew over here from the hospital <laughs> trying to get this done. So I'm sorry, we're a little flabbergasted. So, okay, so go ahead, mom, get, give them your best tips. <laughs> oh, oh, thanks. I get to start <laughs> with no brain. Um, actually, I, we're going to try to give you some ideas that are a little bit different than what they you normally see out there on the internet, or not totally different, but a different way of looking at the things. Mm -hmm. I want you to try to start thinking out of the box a little bit. We're going to give you a whole variety of ways to save on money. Not every single one is going to work for you. Mm -hmm. What we, why we give you so many is so you can pick and choose which one will work for you. Don't just throw up your hands and say, well, these won't work, so I can't save money. Mm -hmm. If none of them work, find something that will work for you. At some point in my life, I've had none of these things, mm -hmm. and I still found out how to save money. So. Don't get discouraged. Another thing, I don't want you to be jumping on the bandwagon and, and act like a robot and go on the internet. And if you see 25 gazillion people saying, this is the way to save money by going to this place or doing this, that may not be such a good thing. You need to research and really think about what you're doing on when you're trying to save money. Just don't listen to everything you hear on the internet like us. <laughs> no, but think it through. And I wanted to start out today with two things that will save you before you even go to the grocery store. The first one is to stop wasting the food you do buy. If you, They say that the average American, and I have studied this myself, and there have been surveys or things done to show this, 50% of the food that most Americans buy is thrown out. Don't immediately say, oh, but I use all my leftovers. That's not the type of thing I'm talking about. I mean, that's part of it, but that's not the main thing. Yeah. Oh, hold on. Let's let's focus on that for just a minute. On throwing away on the leftovers and um, menus on a dime here, we have a specific page that is different leftovers and how to use them. So We have beef. We have chicken leftovers, that type of pork. But when you... So what you can do is make a huge roast... And then we list in here the menu ideas and then how what recipes to use. So like if you cook a roast, chop it up and use it in a salad. Chocolate, chalk it up and use it in beef and noodles. Um, Michael put the recipe up there for beef, beef and noodles for you. Um, add it to pasta. Grind it up with a pickle and add a hard-boiled egg and some mayonnaise and make sandwiches out of it. We're talking using every I mean, little bit little bit for lunches and even dinners if you want. Or if you have a chicken, you can make, you know, at least three meals out of one chicken. Sometimes you can make up to five, depending how, how many you Which use. You so you can use, you know, like chicken sandwiches and casseroles and chicken and noodles and chicken fajitas. If you roast a chicken, then make those dinners the next 
few days, or make, if you make it a roast chicken for dinner, then the next few days use them up as leftovers. And use a small amount of the meat. Mm -hmm. Cut the meat in about half to a quarter of what you normally use for a recipe if you can. That'll save a lot, too, doing like that. Um, one person said, Jennifer said, I can't get my husband to eat leftovers. Um, I really don't understand this. People say this all the time. But when we say use leftovers, we're not saying just heat up leftover roast and have a hard piece of roast left over. Make it into another type of meal make, so that you won't even know they're leftovers. Yeah, so like if I make a roast, then the next day I'll make um, roast with gravy on top of noodles. Or I'll make beef, I'll use it in beef stroganoff. Or I'll put it in a stew. So you're making a completely different meal. You're not just warming up. Mm. you know, leftovers that aren't, yeah. you know, that aren't that appetizing, so to speak. Do so. that. Another way to save then for the 50% that we throw away is stop portion control. That's what I'm trying to think of, portion control. You give your child, I mean, you make up a sandwich, and they will take a toddler, a four-year-old, five-year-old, they'll eat out the center of the peanut butter sandwich. And then you've got this big chunk of of um, crust and, and a little bit of bread left where they just took like four bites into the center. And what you do, you made them a whole sandwich and they ate three bites into each one of these halves. You just throw the rest of the way. Mm -hmm. Instead of doing that, first of all, only give them a half a sandwich to start out with. If they want more, make another half for them. Another thing to do, if they never eat the crust, instead of fighting it, cut those crusts off the bread before you make the sandwich, then take those crusts and use them for croutons. We've got recipes in the book. Here's, it's on page 161. If you have dining on a dime, Michael put, put a link up there to the site. Make them into croutons. You can grind them up to use for bread crumbs that you need to dip different things in. And you've saved that chunk of bread. Um, so that's one way. In your drinks, don't pour a whole huge glass of juice, milk, whatever it is that you are drinking, and then you just throw it away. That's the 50% that I'm talking about. Another thing is people are really bad about letting the kids just grab an apple. Say, go get you an apple for a snack. They grab an apple, they take four bites out of it, and then later on you go in there. Oh, are you laughing because that's what you do? Half apples <laughs> everywhere. Yeah. And you find that half apple or more laying on the cab cabinet. Instead, mm -hmm. take the time to cut that apple in half, split it with two children, or, you know, cut it in half and save the rest of it to use for applesauce, fried apples, something like that later on. Use up, that's what I'm talking about, use up all the food that you have. The day before you go to the grocery store, clean out your refrigerator, see what you've got for leftovers in there, and make sure... If you have, like, say, a lot of chicken, then you know when you go to the grocery store the next day, you need to buy something to go along with that chicken. Keep track of the food you're using. Don't leave cookies, ba cookies bags of cookies open. Don't let the kids do that. They get stale. You throw them away. Chips get stale. Instead of throwing them away, crush those chips up and put them on top of a casserole. It takes a little bit of thinking. But I want you to start really thinking about your meals. But that's why we wrote Dining on a Dime. We've got because all of these things in dining to give huge lists of what you can do with this stuff and, and how to use up the food you do buy. Um, and can everybody give me a comment, please, on YouTube and Facebook real quick, just to let me know you can hear us okay and that we're coming through and we're in sync. We are testing a new program, and sorry to interrupt here, but... We just want to make sure everybody's out there. Um, okay, I think so. Go ahead, Mom. Okay. The other thing you could save on um, is portion control. Besides, uh, these are two things now. The 50% use all your groceries. That and this, before you even go to the grocery store, you can start saving. Now, portion control. I found an interesting thing happening. When I was young, this was about the size of our cereal bowl. I can't see if I'm in the picture or not. Yeah, sorry, we're checking comments. But this is the size of a cereal bowl, and this was the really the proper amount of cereal. It holds a half a cup is what a child is supposed to have uh, for cereal. Actually, I think it's more like a half to one for an adult. Mm -hmm. So this was the size bowl. This here is the size bowl that now are coming in the new sets of dishes. Mm -hmm. They're huge. 
And what people do, what happens is, the kids will probably eat this size of a bowl of cereal and they'll eat it all gone. But what they do is they fill this bowl full of cereal and then full of milk. <laughs> and what do you do? Mm -hmm. You dump it out. You know, that's what happens. So check your dishes, control your portions. Even if at first you have to measure it out. Look at the box of cereal. If it says a half a cup is a serving size, measure that amount out. You don't have to do it forever. Do it for a week or two until you figure out what you're doing. Here's another way to save on plates. So, whoops. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. We're slow. This here is a regular, I mean, this here is the size of regular plate. It's what most people use for their dishes. This here is the size plate that you really should be using. And everybody will eat. This is a 12 inch here. Yeah. And this is a, I don't remember if it's eight, eight or nine. nine. I don't know, it's oh, eight yeah. or nine. And what happens is most people will fill either plate up, stack it high with food, and then eat what they want off of it. What the problem is with the big one is that um, they'll eat part, a good portion of it, and then or some of it, and then you've got a whole bunch left over on that plate because they filled that huge big plate too full, and you got to throw this away. Mm. You're laughing. Yeah, because I'm always hollering at my kids to not do that. <laughs> <laughs> the same way goes with beverages and drinks. Now you said this one had eight uh, ounces. Eight ounces. This one has twenty ounces. Mm -hmm. Do you know this? I mean, if you think about it, an eight ounce, I have to juggle here. Okay, six ounces of orange juice is the exact size of orange juice for 100% vitamin C a day for the child. Mm -hmm. Six ounces of orange juice is for nutritional value is all that they need. This is eight ounces, so you don't even need as much as what this cup is. Start doing a right serving size, but half the time people will get a cup or a mug that's 32, 20 to 32 ounce cup or mug, fill it, if not full, at least half full. Well, yeah, they'll fill it with hot cocoa or, here's the thing, they'll fill it with hot cocoa or orange juice or something, and then they yell at their kids for not drinking for not it all. finishing it the, that You shouldn't be yelling at your kids for not finishing pe food if, if you're giving them too big of serving sizes. Yeah, people say, I have picky eaters. I bet you don't have as much a picky eater as... The child only needs so much food. Like we said, what was it, a couple days ago, you take a big scoop and put uh, green beans on their plate when they really probably need four or five green beans. So yeah. it's not so much they're always picky eaters as you're just giving them way more than they need. Uh -huh. Yeah. And uh, Mary Grace says, I give my grandkids smaller cups and glasses, fill the little way, and then they finish what they have. That's, yeah, that's what that's we're trying what we're... to say. Give them smaller portions and let them... Finish what they have first, and then give them, give them more if they're still hungry. So everyone blames McDonald's for obesity and all this stuff. Well, that's ridiculous. It's you know, it's you're you're the parent. You control how much you have to you know how much your kids have. So just um, the thing is, we're so tired that this is one area that we just kind of fluff off. We don't want to take yeah. the time to think about it, to yeah. deal with it. We let the kids pretty much do what they want. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> now our phone's going berserk. This has been one interesting day to wow, say Wow, I, I think this everybody's really going to want this show because we have to, <laughs> we can't if it's, get it to go If it's right. going to happen, it's happened. <laughs> and what well, you know, I find it interesting. I keep a little tiny glasses in a special low-down cabinet for my grandkids when they come over. Even my 18-year-olds now get in that cabinet to get these little tiny glasses out. I just trained them over yeah. the years to drink out of those little glasses. Mm -hmm. So it yeah. won't kill the children is what I'm saying to do these. Yeah, and it's really, I mean, kids appreciate it. And honestly, they, have, they have to be taught. Then we wonder yeah. why when teenagers grow up and they're eating nothing but huge mounds of fast food because yeah. they've never been taught. And even things like if you do buy soda, don't give each child their own can. Um, don't worry, it wasn't me calling Robinson. <laughs> Thanks, Robin. <laughs> yeah, that's the problem with live. Uh, Mike just unplugged the phone, so if anybody calls, we won't know. Um, where was I? Oh, sodas. Or like give them a whole candy bar. We would split a candy bar. 
we would split a can of soda. So your child does not need an entire can all by themselves. We know families where there are half, uh, there, there are soda cans that are half full that are just sitting on the counter and they just are spoiled because kids will eat or drink, you know, half of it and then they won't finish it. So but see, that goes to the 50% now. If they pay, say, $40 for some pop, they're only drinking twenty dollars worth. They could, mm -hmm. you know, that pop would last twice as long for them if they drank the right amount. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. There was another thing. Oh, my brain just went fried. I just thought of the idea. We were talking just, about pop and sodas, sharing them. Yeah, and sharing and, them and different stuff. Yeah. But um, oh, I don't know. Go ahead. You can go on. Um. So, on. This is kind of off talk topic, but Roxy said, I love the tea towels. I have access to templates, but I haven't figured out how to transfer to make my own. Um, Mike will put a link up there to Amazon for a fabric transfer pin, and you just can transfer over. Trace. Trace, trace I mean. Trace something onto it. Trace put onto it, and then you iron it, and then um, that's how we got those on there, so that's a little off topic, but um, yeah, so um, we're gonna let's see. Did you have any other tips for just portion control or uh, not for portion control? I guess. Okay, so we're done with the show. No. <laughs> um, so we're gonna give you a few examples of cheap, easy meals. And oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I know what I was gonna say. It wasn't okay. portion control. But you need to learn and take the time. It'll take time. You can either go on the internet or go to a library and check out a really good book on nutrients. You need to find out what foods have what kind type of nutrients mm -hmm. and that way you can uh, realize that that child maybe doesn't need a whole potato. Mm -hmm. to get, we're given too much too much good nutrients in a way because we're stuffing them full of good food and they don't need that much. You know we're given even though it's just because something's good for you doesn't mean you need a ton of it and that's what we're at fault for doing so make sure you know okay they only need a half a cup of this to get their vitamin C or they only need mm -hmm. such and such of this so study nutrients yeah I'm sorry mm -hmm. so I'm gonna have Mike put our maple glazed chicken recipe up here for you um, this is our maple glazed chicken is the number one is our number one recipe of all time on our website for meats um, it's like four, is it four ingredients? I can't remember. And it's super simple, super, super simple. And so these, I'm going to give you some examples of actual meals that we eat. Um, so one of our meals would be maple glazed chicken with a cucumber salad, our 90 minute rolls, and maybe glazed carrots. So this dinner would probably cost, this dinner would be less than $5 for me to make. And I could make that for our family of seven. If you don't like your cucumber salad, then add in, you know, a regular salad or add in cooked carrots or sliced tomatoes or sliced tomatoes or that kind of thing. So that's the kind of a typical meal that we would eat. Um, let's see. Somebody asks, what kind of snacks do you typically give your kids between meals? Um, whatever's in the well, house. <laughs> whatever's in the pantry. No, um, I usually give them like apples or apples with peanut butter or um, I do let them snack. They like crackers. They like crackers just plain. Rice cakes. But And they like ri rice ca cakes just plain. Um, so we eat a lot of rice cakes and crackers. They will eat a few chips but not... They don't sit down and eat a half a bag of yeah, chips in the setting. Not they like potato chips. Popcorn. They do a lot of popcorn. Yeah, we do a ton of popcorn um and so we have a whole list of snacks too yeah in the, the book and in this well that's what you need to do is just sit down and think of a few things mm -hmm. and i take what i would do is um i think we have listed kind of in here oh let's see where's my list of what i would do i took a notebook and i wrote down like 10 menus 
that I had, and I kept those listed. And I did the same thing with snacks. Write down when you're when you're spraying and write down and write down ten snacks, and there's just and there's just a little notebook, and then you can just refer to that and think, okay, we've got this, and or I can buy this, and just refer to that. Don't just try to think off the top of your head. Write down a paper. And I do the same thing. Okay, what's 10 meats that I could have and how a way to cook them, like beef stroganoff or um, spaghetti, lasagna. Just list those down. Even though you think you know them and you remember them, that just takes one more thing out of your mind and makes it easier for you to remember. I had a page that said salad, so I'd list cucumber salad, sliced tomatoes, Toss salad, fruit salad, and I'd list that all under there. Even though there are things I know about, then all I have to do is glance. I wouldn't have to strain mm -hmm. my brain. My brain, yeah. I can't. And we have a really good applesauce muffin, a good apple muffin that uses applesauce on our website. I'll have Mike put the recipe up there. Um, I will, for applesauce muffin, um, I will make up a thing of muffins or mom's sweet muffins. Mom, Mike can put those up. Um, Tracy, yes, we are live now. Um, we'll put up applesauce muffins and mom's sweet muffins. Those cost about, man, not even 50 cents to make. And, um, one thing about the applesauce muffins that I like is I used to give the kids a small dish of applesauce and then I'd have a half a jar left. So what I would do then to make sure I used it up, I would make up the applesauce muffins then in the evening for dinner or something. That way I used the whole thing and didn't have any leftovers to miss. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and if you're having problems on Facebook, please hit refresh and that will help. Um, thank you, Sue. <laughs> we appreciate the encouragement. She said, don't fret, you're doing a good job. <laughs> yeah, we're getting frustrated because we are we have so many things to try and fix and it's hard to get everything going together. Um, for, for other snacks, we'll do things like make no-bake fudge cookies and um, Mike can put that recipe up on the on Facebook for you guys, and we'll put the links in YouTube when we're done with the video. But we'll make um, a batch of no bake fudge cookies, and what? well, the secret on that is there's nothing wrong with the kids having cookies once in a while. What happens? You need to give them one, two, depending on the age of the child, and limit it. You know, yeah. people say, "Oh, well, the kids shouldn't be eating all this stuff." Part of what the problem is, is not so much they're eating like the, the cookies, mm -hmm. it's they're eating too much. People yeah. stopped watching the kids and they just allowed them to eat anything, and that's mm -hmm. when everybody started yeah. having problems. Um, Denise said, I love your granola bars recipe. Mike, can you put the granola bar recipe up there? And <laughs> Daryl says, I love your cornbread. Can you do the cornbread? <laughs> Mike can't, can't keep it. Lost. What? <laughs> uh, granola bars. Sweet muffins. And, yeah. sweet muffins. And granola bread and cornbread. <laughs> Poor Mike can't keep up. Could you rewrite um, the cookbook, Mike? <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, and there are times where we'll fix the thing of no bake fudge cookies and our oldest 18 year old. We have three boys and we'll get them all made. And honestly, we, when we um, get them on there, then, <laughs> sorry, I need to ban some people. Sorry, guys. Um, we'll, we'll put them out on the kitchen table and, They'll be go. Well, I'll literally go to the to the bathroom or something, and I'll come back, and boom, they'll be gone. <laughs> Where did the whole batch of no bake go? Um, Melody said, "Time for a giveaway." Yes, on Saturday night at 6 p.m., we're going to announce our first giveaway. So be sure to look at that. Um, Tracy wants to know how far ahead do you plan your meals, and what time of day do you start dinner? Um, I I plan my meals about five minutes ahead of time. <laughs> To her mother's despair. <laughs> because I am just too tired and I don't always think. But what I do do is I have a list of the 10 main meals that we eat all the time. And so we usually eat um, tostadas and we'll eat tacos and we'll do things like grilled chicken, um, cornbread. And um, let's see. We'll have a roast chicken, we'll have um, pizza, uh, cheeseburger rolls, and those kinds of things. So what I do is I just kind of, we just kind of eat the same meals. Everybody loves those, so and most people do eat the same 10 meals. So 
I plan about five minutes ahead of time. Now, Mom, she'll plan two or three weeks ahead of time. No, I don't but, two or three weeks. But, oh, and one thing I do, though, that's different is there's a lot of meal planning people out there that say, oh, plan your two weeks of meal. And that's mm -hmm. fine. You can do that. But for me, I don't feel it utilizes leftovers well enough. Or emergencies and things that our come life, in. Our life is not so scheduled that we can use that. Um, yeah. And, but, but so what I do is I do what I call cooking out of my pantry. So I don't make a special trip to the grocery store to go buy things for dinner. I mean, I, I refuse to do that. We will eat mm -hmm. what we have at home. Even if it's macaroni and cheese, I will not make a special trip to the dinner. And honestly, it's macaroni and cheese about once a year. But I just, I keep my pantry stocked, and then I cook out of my pantry. So when I, I order my groceries online, so when I order my groceries, I'll only do it every two weeks, but I order to refill my pantry, and then I cook out of my pantry, so. What I do is, the day before I go to the grocery store, I go through the ads of the grocery stores that I'm going to hit, like all these in my regular grocery store, and I write down what's on sale. Then I take and check what's in my refrigerator still and freezer, what I have in there, and then I'll make out maybe a week's worth of menus. And I don't say that Monday I'm going to have this, Tuesday I'm going to do that. What I do is I make up like mm -hmm. four very easy meals and three a little bit harder meals. And by that I mean the ones that I can do really quick because we have such emergencies happening in our family and weird things going on that I have to have simple, I can think, okay, I've got this simple meal written down. I can have that for today since it's a hectic day. Tomorrow is maybe easier. One secret though, even if you don't plan your meals a whole lot, always plan what you're going to have for your meat or your main dish and get it mm -hmm. out to thaw. That's my biggest problem is, um, not remembering to defrost anything. And I tell your no, story. Hold on just a second. <laughs> Melody asked if we had a pantry list. Yes, Mike will put up, we have a list at livingonadime.com <laughs> on things to keep in the pantry. Um, yeah, so Mom will tell you my story about defrosting my hamburger a couple days ago. This is why I say defrost <laughs> it in the morning, so then that's half the battle there. You've already got it defrosted. You won't be as tempted to go out to eat because you've already got something defrosted. So you want to use it. We should have. Tara, the other day I was sitting here, and it was like 15 minutes before we were supposed to be eating, and I looked over, and she had this tiny pan. Well, now, to my defense, it was actually 45 minutes. We were making cheeseburger rolls, so it was a little bit longer. Yeah. And they take an hour and a half, right? Yeah. <laughs> but she had this small little pan and one of those huge five-pound things of hamburger, and it was frozen solid, and she had it sitting in the pan. And... I guess she had it on real low, and I don't know what she thought that was going to do, but she had it sitting there on the burner cooking real low, and I'm looking at that thing thinking, should I do something with this to help her out? Because she wasn't... It's kind of hanging over the Yeah, it's head. hanging out the pan, top of the pan, you know, this big chunk, and I'm thinking, okay, where are we going with this here? So I'm sitting at the table, and she comes back into the kitchen, and I'm sitting there, and she's looking at it trying to stir it or something, you were really stirring it, and she looks up at me, and I burst out laughing, because she looked like a four-year-old who had just done something that her mom had told her not no, to do, I and with not. that guilty look, they look, is mom watching me, and is mom going to tell me I shouldn't be doing this, and it was so funny, the look on her face, so... I was not doing anything wrong. I do was as, just defrosting do, untraditionally. Do as I say and not as Tara does. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's for sure. Yeah. So, oh, my God, my cousin popped in here. Hello, Tammy. So glad to see you. Hi, Tammy. <laughs> Don't tell them any of my cooking <laughs> stories. We keep saying we're going to have cooking with Tara because, you know. It's I, terrifying. Yeah, I pretty much burn. Like half of what I cook. <laughs> it's like, Don't worry, a lot of the recipes in the cookbook were mine. So yeah. what? No, they're not. <laughs> uh, she keeps claiming they're all hers. They're mm, not all mm. hers. Um, where do I buy my groceries online? I buy them um, on Walmart to go, and I just go online and I order, and then the next day they show up mm, at my doorstep. <laughs> As a matter of fact, nice. they even bring them into my garage, and my garage door is right next to my pantry, and I literally just, I have not even two feet to load it straight into my pantry. It is wonderful. I love it. I wish they had an affiliate program because i do a whole show on it, but, <laughs> but I should get paid by Walmart to, to 
um, endorse, them. endorse them because I just, I love it. And I, I honestly, going grocery shopping was one of those things where I would have to take a Xanax. I mean, I did it, but I felt like I would have to take a Xanax just to go in to go grocery shopping because between the fluorescent lights and all the people nice. never being able to find anything, I could never find anything, even if I went to the same store. I just love buying my groceries online. So if you can buy your groceries online, I would. Kroger is doing it. Um, Doug wants to know, Doug and Kate wants to know, how much does it cost? Nothing. It, well, it costs $7 for the delivery fee. But for me, that is as much gas as I cost to go in to town to buy groceries. And also, even... If Walmart was across the street, I would still pay the seven dollars <laughs> to do it because the stress. Well, it, it takes, takes you me, a little bit less time yeah. because you're not wandering the store trying to pick everything it up. It takes and... me. It takes me a full two. It takes me a full two hours to order, um, or I mean, to walk around Walmart to get my groceries. And I mean, I literally get physically ill mm -hmm. when I go for Walmart. <laughs> So I just love that I can order groceries online. Um, so let's see. Kroger's is drop-off. Yeah, that's what mine is, too. Uh, well, I think if you're meaning they bring it to your door, that's what I do. Melody wants to know, do you buy your meat online? No, I don't, although I was thinking about trying a couple places. Um, so I don't know. If you guys know of a few good online places to get meat, let me know, and I'll maybe give them a try. To be honest, I find meat cheaper uh, with sales. Mm -hmm. I shop the sales. I do um, go to a couple of local grocery stores like a Kroger or a, um, Mike's getting to work out. <laughs> Poor Mike. He's, he's getting run ragged in this show. Um, I'll, so I'll shop the sales usually for meat. And watch because like uh, when um, Memorial Day is coming up mm -hmm. or Labor Day, They'll have things like hamburgers, hot dogs, a lot of times... Well, Father's Day is steaks. Father's Day is steaks. So watch for those times and stock up on that type of meat at those yeah. times. Um, Jennifer asked about my grandmother. Um, she, We don't know what happened, but she did something to her hip, so she, it looks like she's going to be okay, mm -hmm. just needs some physical therapy or something. But thank you guys, we appreciate it. Mm -hmm. So Crystal wants to know, where do we live? I live in Colorado, Mom lives in Kansas. Um... What other specific questions did you have about grocery savings? Because um, if there's something we didn't cover, please put a comment in there so we can know, um, you know, what... One other thing, too, that we mentioned the other day briefly, but on groceries, drink water. Start drinking water, and not bottled water necessarily, unless yeah. you're in a really weird place that has nasty, nasty. But drink uh, water. Because one-third of the average person's grocery bill goes towards items, to beverages, beverage things to drink. And if you don't think so, take your, your groceries list one or two times and add them up for like a couple of weeks. And you'll find things like sugar that goes into tea, tea bags, coffee, uh, juice, chocolate for chocolate milk, the milk itself. Mm -hmm. And all those types of things. That's not even including pop and uh, yeah. juices. You look how many... And you say, well, juice, people need juice. You do, but you don't need to drink it to quench your th thirst. Use things like juice and milk for nutritional value only, not to quench your thirst. Use the water to quench your thirst. Yeah. Um, and Roxy said, this might blow your mind, but we shop once a month for the main bulk and spend hours, four hours to shop and take a $5 taxi ride. Actually, that doesn't blow my mind. Mm -hmm. We used we to do used the to same do thing. <laughs> we lived in Timbuktu, Idaho, in a little tiny town called Nez Perce, Idaho, on the Camas Prairie. And w going into town, it was 60 miles. Or, no, 70 miles. So Not, not an easy drive either. Yeah, right? through the mountains. And um, so we would shop... Once a month for about four four to six hours at least. And, oh, man, that was uh, We'd throw the two kids in the car, and we'd have to get all our needs mm -hmm. for everything for the month. You know, anything pharmaceutical, anything we needed, we had to get mm -hmm. everything. And the car would be packed with the two of us, the trunk, the back seat. Yeah, and... I'd have barfing kids, and, oh, my goodness, it was a nightmare. <laughs> our kids at the time were... 
between newborn and um, two. So yeah, it it that was really bad. The car would break down. <laughs> I think if we didn't have the kids and we weren't sick, it would be okay. But you know, the kids got car sick growing up and down the mountains, and everything. Yeah, it was interesting. Um, Melody, what do you think a family of four grown adults, three men, budget pay? La, live in Nashville. Live in, Nashville. live in oh, live in Nashville. Okay. Um, you know, it depends on your groceries. I don't know how expensive groceries are in Nashville because it does vary. Like, I know Canadians have higher grocery bills than we do. So it does vary. The thing is, is to fill them up on things like add noodles or potatoes rice or potatoes and, to mm -hmm. your meals. That will fill them up without the expensive, um, costs of meat and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, I will buy a case of water, and then if the bottles make it, I will fill them up and stick them back in the fridge. Yeah. Yes. One way um, to save on the water, did you say this? I don't know, is to let your water sit in the refrigerator mm. for 24 hours, if you can, 12 hours. That lets the chlorine evaporate so your water tastes better. Usually people don't like the taste of their water because mm. of the chlorine. That's why bottled water tastes good because it's been sitting on the shelf for so long mm -hmm. and that's the only really difference of it a lot of times. Yeah, so okay let's see do we have any other tips or tricks? Um, just if anybody's in Colorado mom and I are gonna be at the Birthhood quilt show in the park in Birthhood Colorado tomorrow. Come and Ooh, say yeah, hi. Say I'm gonna hi. be selling my soap. Um, and so come by and say hi. It's free. So if you want to come by and yeah, I don't know why you would want to come by. I guess if you like quilts. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> yeah, or so if you please buy so. Um, oh, I'm tired. Sorry, guys. Um, the other thing was, um, it's, it's a free quilt show. So we're going to be there from 930 to four tomorrow. That was what I was going to say. Denise wants to know, do you ever eat out? Yes, mm -hmm. um, about two to three times a month, Mike and the kids and I will stop at McDonald's or Wendy's after church, and everybody orders off the McDollar menu, so it's about $15 or so. Um, Mike and I will go on a date and eat out about once a month or so. Yeah, he's shaking his head. We need to up that. <laughs> <laughs> um we do have a really good article on our website um, called um, Stop Eating Your Way Into Debt. If you eat out every day, read that article. It really shows you how eating out costs you a huge amount of money. And um, it, it takes away from the specialness of it, too. The kids yeah. get excited about going to McDonald's or wherever they're going because they don't get to do it that often. And, and kids don't have a lot of things they get excited over anymore. You know, they get everything they want, so nothing seems special. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it, it's really a treat to go out instead of just yeah. ho-hum every day. Um, let's see. I would like to know what's better, to pick your own fruit or buy groceries. Um, honestly, I think to buy them at the grocery store. I find the pick-your-own-fruit places to be very expensive, and I won't do it myself. And why should I? I it makes no sense. So I'm going to pay extra, so I have to go to the work for four or five hours to pick fruit. Plus, I'm going to pay higher prices. No, makes sense. <laughs> I, won't, I won't do it. Um, Denise wants to know, do we do pizza takeout? Never. No. I don't ever anymore. Um, we used to do Domino's um, when we first got sick. And most of the time, we got it free, though, because at that time, they had the guarantee if they got it there in 30 minutes or it was free. And so we got it free most of the time because for some reason, I guess they just kept hitting rush hour traffic. They were always late. Um, so no, I did order, my son is a pizza takeout delivery guy. We <laughs> we did order once from him. You didn't have to pay the tip then, so you said. Well, I did. That oh. was even worse. <laughs> I had to pay a big tip and I about passed out when I got the bill. It was like $40 for two pizzas. Oh, I about had a cow. No. So... So no offense, I love my son, but I won't ever be doing that again. <laughs> um, let's see. Um, Roxy, where in Colorado are you? I'm just curious. Um, Christina says, we eat out for birthday or special occasions. Yes, mm -hmm. we will go out for almost everybody's birthday. We try to go out for everybody's birthday. 
Um, we have kind of combined it a little bit with Mother's Day or that kind of thing, but we do eat out for Mother's Day usually. And, but now that we have seven people, it's kind of hard. We've really stopped eating out a lot because it's just costing us so much. So yeah. Mm -hmm. And, um, let's see, did anybody else have any other questions? Uh, we're not getting any other questions on here. So picking fruit can be a good family activity. Yeah, it can. And if, that, if that's your entertainment that's your for yeah, then go ahead and do it. Yeah. yeah. So me, it's not entertainment for me to go pick fruit because you don't want to get the I garden. Out. Yeah, I have a huge eighteen hundred square foot garden anyway, and so more gardening is not entertainment. <laughs> entertainment <laughs> for me really. Life. Yeah. So how can I find some ingredients in Greece? Laundry recipes. Um, well Mike can put our homemade laundry detergent recipe on there for you I don't know that I cannot tell that name I don't know how you would find them I guess order online. from Amazon yeah, maybe online I have no mm -hmm. idea um, let's see I, I don't know if anybody has any ideas on how you could get stuff overseas then you could t do that um, can you share some typical simple tips for meal planning sure Tina says that Oh, you're looking at me to share the simple? Well, you know, okay, okay, here's what. The, I, my mom did just the other night. We sat down. She put out a container of cottage cheese. She sliced some tomatoes. She had opened up a can of corn. And I know that's not, you know, the tomatoes mm -hmm. were fresh. We had a little variety. And then she had some chicken and noodles. I think sometimes we watch these programs on online or on TV, TV where they make these very elaborate meals. Keep it simple. Some of the best meals we had was stay with my husband's grandmother. She would slice a cantaloupe, slice up some apples, put a bunch of grapes on the table. She put out a dish of pickles, a stack of just white sliced bread with butter and jam, and uh, you know some simple things. We don't have to even cook half the time. You can you can just do you know simple fruits and vegetables. Keep it very simple. You don't have to have it elaborate. I think we we overthink it. We overwork at this. And that, again, is where the list comes in. On my list, I would have, for side dishes, I have cottage cheese. I would have canned pears. If in season, I'd have the fresh fruit or whatever. And I just look at that list and think, well, I could have cottage cheese, and I have some tomatoes in the refrigerator, and there's my side dish. Yeah. And, and don't do 25 different dishes. You can put four or five different items out, and you've yeah. got a full meal. Um, Doris wants to know a simple chicken recipe. Uh, Mike, can you put a link to our I, chicken recipes just in the search for her? We have a ton of chicken recipes. Oh, lots and, of but just to tell you, Michael put a link up there to the search on our um, chicken recipes. But a couple of things. Just throw some chicken breasts with a can of cream of mushroom soup in the crock pot and then serve that over some rice. I do cream of chicken soup. Yeah, or you. cream of chicken soup. You can do either cream of mushroom or cream of chicken. The other thing is you can just throw some um, chicken with some barbecue sauce. Put it in there. Serve it with some potatoes or something like that. Um, I just put the chicken in and sprinkle it with salt and pepper. Yep. And then you can Call just it grill it also. Um, let's see. Uh, Denise said, that's why Thanksgiving and holiday meals drive me crazy. Too much work. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. um, one lady wanted to know, and I missed your name, I'm sorry, um, about burnout from dinner. How do you cook dinner when you're sick of cooking dinner? You know, that the thing is to keep it... There were times where we just had a bowl of cereal and some toast and a banana for dinner. Yeah. And some nights you could just pick one or two nights that you have that. You, when I say keep it simple, I really mean keep it simple. Some nights we would scramble up eggs and have maybe some uh, and English eggs. muffins or something like that to go with the scrambled eggs and maybe slice up an orange. That was good for dinner. And then um, another thing... I'm going to have Mike put our 10 crock pot recipes for $5 on there um, so you can get some more ideas. Another thing, too, is um, we have what we call every man for themselves night. If I'm just too exhausted or burnt out, then every person just goes in and they scrunch up the leftovers, whatever they can find. And that's another thing. Just have a leftover night. Pull everything that's a leftover, hodgepodge, and set it on the table. So those are a couple ways, if you're just really burnt out, to prevent that and to help when you are having that. 
Marilyn wants to know, um, what are menu meal ideas for a large family? So some things you can do for that. We have five kids. I don't know how many you have, but we have five. And um, we will do things like make a big pot of um, stew with some, homemade dinner, with some homemade dinner rolls, chili. If you don't want to make rolls, just use crackers. We use crackers all the time. We'll do things like bake a bunch of potatoes and put several different toppings on there and have a baked potato bar. Um, but then the other thing is to use meat as a condiment and not as a main, uh, what am I, not as the main meal. So like in chili or in stew or in, um, you know, chicken and noodles, those kinds of things. Those, those are the ways you save money and you can feed a lot of people at the same time. And be sure to um, add, like, potato, like if you're having a roast, fry some potatoes or bake some potatoes to go with the roast. When you fill in with the potatoes, then they don't eat so much of the roast and that kind of thing. Um, Leslie says, you're doing a great job. Oh, good, thank, thank you. you. She says, we're doing a good job. Thank you, Winnie. <laughs> We, we appreciate encouragement. We get so many people yelling at us. I don't know why. All we're talking about is saving money. Yeah. But I've gotten death threats and all kinds of things. And we're like, okay. <laughs> so anyway. Um, let's see. Okay. Any other questions? I think we're getting down to the end here. If anybody else has a question real quick, um, let me know. Again, you can go to our website at livingonadime.com, and we have, in Dining on a Dime, we have over 1,200 recipes and tips in Dining on a Dime. This is our first cookbook. It was called Not Just Beans. It's the original name. Nobody got it. It was supposed to mean you don't have to eat beans to save money. Nobody got it. We changed the name to Dining on a Dime. A publisher changed the name to Dining on a Dime. And... Um, we have sold over 350,000 copies of this book. So somebody likes it. So I must, you know, we must have done something right. But we have everything in here from tortillas and how to make your own taco seasoning. You will save your money at buying this book. If you don't, I guarantee you, I will return your money because you will save at least the amount we of this book. We have how to roast yeah. pumpkin seeds. We have all the homemade ingredients for, like, making your own... Uh, uh, so, uh, not toiletries, you know, yeah, like, like Bath and Beauty products, like Bath lip and balm, and we have all like the that. children's recipes, like slime and different things like yeah. that. A whole huge section, gift baskets. Yes, yeah, we've got every, ideas. we've got everything in there. Then we have menus on dining on menus from dining on a dime, and this is the menu plans that go with dining. So we use the recipes from dining for the rest for the um with the menu plans, and then we have quick and easy menus. And this is for when you're tired and you don't feel like cooking. These are really simple, quick, healthy dinners yeah. that you can cook, but they're not going to cost you a lot. Mm -hmm. And you can get all of those at Living on a Dime. Um, Doug and Kate, it's $21.95. And um, Denise says, I have the old one. Do I want the new one? You may or may not. We have 40, re 40 new recipes and tips in Dining on a Dime that we don't have in Not Just Beans. Um, because when we updated it, we put in two new chapters. Um, Christina, I'm sorry we don't ship outside the USA. We have had problems with shipping, and we can't ship it outside the but U.S. But go to anymore. the website because we've got yeah. a lot on the, almost just more on the website. I mean, yeah. different we, things, different things. We but. have over 1,500 recipes and tips on our, our website too. So go check those out. They're different. We have different things in both mm -hmm. areas. So the book yeah. really helps though. It's handy to have it on hand a little bit either. What? Oh, yeah. Oh, you, oh hello. Oh. <laughs> Mike's sitting here trying to tell me. So we can ship our ebooks. You can get our ebooks. You can get online. it an ebook. Yeah. You can get dining in yeah. ebook. Michael put the Michael put the link up there for you again <laughs> um, for the store for our ebooks. You can all of our books do have an ebook form. I'm sorry. <laughs> you can tell Mom and I aren't aren't with it. Um, Denise, do we sell on Amazon? Are we still on Amazon, Mike, or no? There are some Kindle books on there. Okay, Denise, we have some of our smaller Kindle books on there. We do not have dining anymore because Amazon was not doing good things for us. So 
we're not on Amazon anymore. Um, let's see. All right, I, let's see. Don says, that cookbook is absolutely my go-to. I love it. I have been following your website for years. I'm so grateful for how y'all have helped me through the years. Oh, well, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> Yay, that's great. Melody says, thanks, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> he appreciates us, frankly, over there trying to, to get them. Um, okay, so I think that's it. Mm -hmm. Please be sure to check out livingonadime.com. Tomorrow we're going to be at the Birth Hood Quilt Show in the park in Birth Hood, Colorado. So and stop by. Six o'clock here. And then come back tomorrow at 6 o'clock for another live show. And we are going to do our first giveaway, and you're going to like it. So <laughs> show up, because it's going to be great. So have a great day, guys, and we'll see you later. Bye-bye.